Hey, we got to so wait a couple minutes to see if anybody comes on. Um, testing out these daytime lives or whatever. Mangapo. So I'm at this park. I'm in Virginia, as a lot of you already know. I live in Virginia. I live in Northern Virginia. Oh, hey, Shantae. You said you were missing me. Oh, I didn't leave, y'all. <clears throat> but yeah, I'm just, I'm just at the park. Like, I like to go to the park sometimes and, and exercise, like walk and run and do, you know, push-ups and things. Instead of going to the gym, because that gets kind of boring. And I'm in the gym every week anyways, so. But yeah, so I was just here and like when I'm driving up at this park, this park is like right on the water. It's on the, um, it's like a branch of the Aquaquan River. And um, we're part of Virginia. I'm in Northern Virginia, Northern Virginia. So this is Fairfax. It's like at the line of Fairfax County where I'm at right now. You say you're in Massachusetts? But yeah, so when I'm driving in here, like on the way across the bridge to the park, um, you can see, you can see the big mounds that were, were thriving here. Like this whole park is basically a mound complex. Okay, so yeah, right coming off across the bridge. Let me see if I can show you. I'm gonna show you the marina. Let me see if it'll let me flip. Just a little, like a little marina. I have my headphones in so you can hear me. Hey, peace from Rhode Island. Yeah, so, you know, you can see how, like this little area here, this is um, Aquaquan Park. So this park used to be a town. It used to be a Powhatan town. Yeah. So it used to be a Powhatan town here. And um trying to get a better angle so you guys can see me. Um, but yeah, it used to be a town. And people still like, um, I think I found like uh, Arrowhead or something here. One time I was here, like me and my brother used to walk here all the time. We would find feathers and like the birds kind of, um, I don't know what you call it. They hang out. <laughs> they hang out here. So I'm going to walk around so y'all can see a little bit. But, um, yeah, most of the parks in the nation, you will see that there's some type of indigenous history uh, preserved here. And I think that was one of the reasons for creating so many parks. Um, and people, they know that we need to be in nature even though we don't do it. Because we're in cities, we're in suburbs. Yeah, facts, right? So that's one of the big secrets. You gotta get out in nature, especially now when the weather's good. Like it's not too hot right now. So, yeah. But um, this park has a lot of history. It's like right beside um, an old, I guess, prison or jailhouse and the area one area of this park used to be a women's suffrage prison so the women who fought for women's rights were imprisoned over here all right let me let you see the river I was, there was some people passing so i was trying to not, not show too much of the park but you can see and a lot of people have their boats and their yachts over here. Like all this was, like I said, an indigenous town over here. Um, and the people did trading and things. And there's also an old um, Powhatan story about one of the um, areas down this river, down the Aquaquan. Um, the story of the three sisters. It was three sisters from um, one of the Powhatan tribes uh, related to the Dogs or the uh, Chapawamsic, who are up here in Northern Virginia. Um, so all the three sisters, there was, a, of course, this is back in the Great War, the Algonquins versus the Iroquois. And um, there was 
a couple of Iroquois guys that got caught down here and the three sisters fell in love with the guys. And um, so the guys had to go back home. You know, they're the enemies, like the sisters are in love with the enemy, basically. And they had to go back home. So the women were trying to follow, I'm trying to remember the story, but the women were trying to follow them across the river to go back and find a man or whatever. And they were like, they were gonna marry them anyways. They don't care what, what was going on. And this big storm happened and the three sisters were in this boat and they end up drowning in the middle of the river. And they said after the women drowned, there was these three big stones in the middle of the river. So um, years later, more recent time, I think in the 1970s, um, they've been, people have been having like strange occurrences, occurrences, excuse me, <laughs> occurring, I'm walking so I'm like breathing. But they had strange instances, instances happen on the river and they were trying to build a bridge there and all this bad stuff started happening, storms and crazy stuff. And people said that they saw the ghost of the three sisters. There were three um, daughters of one of the chiefs up here. So this is something, something interesting that I learned. All right. How do we get our last names being English? I don't see, for instance, what? OK, so right here, you see right here, this is like one of the artificial mounds in the park because they tore down other natural mounds or mounds created by the indigenous people here. So they created this artificial mound when they redid the park, they built like this nice, I'll show y'all if, if I make it down there. They built this nice complex where you can have nice parties and weddings and things. So they took that dirt from that area and moved it over here. All right? Y'all you know, see my band with this, um, I'm walking in the park, so it's kind of, let me know if it's too shaky for y'all. And I can't see all your comments, so. Yeah, but this park is, I love this park. It's nice and peaceful. It's never too crowded. Like even if people's here doing soccer games and barbecues, it's not too bad. Okay. Y'all got any questions? No questions. I can't see the other questions. Let me see if I can scroll up and see the questions. Oh, about the last names? Let's see. Uh, how do we get our last names being English? I don't see, for instance, any history of my family coming from Wales. Oh, I'm sorry. Wales or what? Coming from slavery, but we have Dutch and Welsh names. It's possible Aborigines England intermingled with. Well, when a lot of these Europeans came here, they didn't bring women. So a lot of them at least the upper upper class men who were able to married indigenous women and a lot of them tried to get indigenous women of high standing i know this happened in my family oh this is a better view of the river let's go over here i know for a fact that happened with my family um but these europeans at least this line i'm talking about were not um they were mixed they were not pale. They're listed as mulattoes. Oof. Yeah, it's hot out here, y'all. I'm gonna let you see the river. This is the um, Occoquan. It's beautiful. Hold on. You see all the birds hanging out, ducks or whatever, seagulls. Uh, I'm not sure what they call them on the river. See the marina again. This is nice and quiet out here. Besides me running my mouth. <laughs> it's nice and quiet. But yeah, back to the, to the last names. Um, some of the people got in for intermarriage with the women and the men. And then also, um, 
too bright. Also, um, trade. So say your chief, he or she um, trade, wanted to trade with certain groups of Europeans and they thought the person was cool and they liked them. So next time they went somewhere and they had to do something with the Europeans and the person asks what their surname is, they'll say, oh, my surname is Smith because you know, I did, me and John Smith are cool and that's my homie and I like his last name. So I'm just gonna take his last name. And then in some instances, they took our last name, like names like um, Brown and things were just description words of the people. Most of those indigenous peoples, if you look up your surnames, I know for a fact Brown is very, very indigenous, different groups, tribes. Like for example, in Virginia, there's Promonkey Browns, there's Nottaway Browns, the Chickahominy Browns, different different groups of um, tribes. You can hear the ducks too. Anybody else got any more questions? I'm trying to, um, you know, I haven't been on here for a while, so I'm trying to give, give y'all some, some FaceTime on here. <laughs> Whatever. Frida Rainey said, I got a friend saying, the reason some of us are lighter because of mixing with pale people. Um, I have to drop my water bottle. Um, I wouldn't say specifically, there's, there were some people who already were lighter than some people who are mixed with Europeans and they're still dark. So you can't necessarily say that the only reason why people are light because they're mixed, because there's dark skinned people that are very mixed with Europeans of the pale shade and the dark shade. And there's also people mixed with the, uh, the Asian, the Siberian type. It said we had all colors of copper. Yep, we had all colors of copper here. They keep describing the copper colored races, plural, not just one type of people. Uh, Lewis, I'm in Occoquan Park. in Northern Virginia. Yep, all colors of copper. You can see I'm looking, I'm looking coppery today. <laughs> Depending on the lighting, I'm looking a different shade of copper. You said with the same hair. No, people had different hair types, just like they do all across the world. This is looking at Asia, for example. Asia has the, the Adam and Islanders, which are very dark skin. Oh, you from Chesapeake? Okay. But Asia has the Adamant Islanders in India, which are very, very dark skinned, peppercorn hair. They also had the Negritos, who are dark skinned, with um, kinky to curly type hair. Then they have the uh, darker uh, mongoloid types. You know, they look like the, the Khmers and Cambodians and Laos people. You know, people from Laos look are very dark skinned. Then they have the medium types, and they have the light ones with slanted eyes, and you have the types that look like people from India who have the varying colors and hair textures. And You see what I'm saying? If Asia can look like that, why couldn't it look like that here? And that's what people have been describing, but you see from all those different places, the majority of people were, were dark. Somewhere in the middle between the Adam and Islanders and the, the Laos looking people, right? The Laos people were dark skinned. Uh, they had, some of them have brown eyes, some of them have, uh, um, I don't know what you, proper slanted eyes, right? So most people here were in that brown range. You said your great granddaddy used to say what? used to tell me about all you're saying. Yep, see, it must be true. <laughs> so I'm not making it up. I've done years of work, uh, research, and I also had my grandmother, great-grandmother, tell me these things as well. So, Walter Plecker, you want me to talk about Walter Plecker? Oh, uh, our battery's kind of low, but I'll talk about him for a little bit. Um, 
Walter Plecker, he mainly affected Virginia, my ancestors here in Virginia, and other people's ancestors. Um, and he didn't come around until like the early 1900s. So it wasn't like he could do so much damage, but he was involved in a lot of eugenics. He's a big major part of the eugenics movement. Um, he also mentored the Nazis. So he, they kind of patterned what he was doing after um, their whole World War I, World War II regime and things like that. So. And uh, Flecker, he kind of had this complex that uh, the Virginia Indians were trying to become white in society and get their self out of a low standing. And he didn't want that. He didn't want the tribes to reconnect like they're doing now, reclaiming their land and reclaiming their tribes and bands. He also didn't want there to be a record of any more indigenous people in the state of Virginia. So what he did, start changing records. They started hiding records, which the, um, the Library of Virginia have found and people's families who were hiding the records have returned them. Um, they also burned places down. Now they have been doing the burnings before that. Um, the Library of Virginia will tell you that they do not have records before, I think, 1854 for some counties, most counties. But uh, like I said, people were returning the hidden. Like this new generation, they're not, um, they're not putting up with a lot of this, the racism and uh, all this stuff. And you have to commend people. That's why we can't, um, can't be giving everybody else a hard time now that we're finding ourselves in our place. We can still love ourselves and represent our people without having to hate everybody. And I'm not talking like Martin Luther King because People that know me know I'm more of a Malcolm X type. <laughs> but I don't have no problem with other people. I love myself and love my people, and that's what's important right now. We need to focus on that and getting us where we need to be. And that's really the truth. So if people get in the way, that's another story. <laughs> but um, so Walter Plecker, he did a lot of changing. He, put, he made a couple lists. I have certain surnames on that list that they were saying that were trying to claim to be Indian and, and he changed them to mulatto or Negro or whatever. So this was, most of the stuff he did was in like 1920. He wasn't back in the 1700s or whatever, like people were trying to act. He wasn't really involved in other states. I hope you can hear me. He wasn't really involved in other states, but he did influence people because, like I said, the eugenics movement was big at that time. People were scared that the immigrants and um, the indigenous people, the people of color and people from Eastern Europe was going to take over. So they kind of made up a lot of racist stuff just to make themselves seem superior, you know. No, his policies didn't sweep across the South. His influence, because he had a lot of friends in high places, like I said, he was connected with the Nazis. So, and the eugenics movement was big in the early beginning of the 20th century. So, he kind of spoke at a couple of the rallies and things, so he did influence people. I'm not saying he didn't, but no, his policies did not sweep across the nation or whatever. The other people with similar mind states already have certain policies in place. So, trying to see what y'all saying. Hello. Damon, you said I have folks from Buckingham. I have folks from Buckingham too, and Lewinburg. Virginia lead to the Northeast. Yeah, at that time, a lot of people left the area. 
and that's during the Great Migration. They're going up north to get better jobs and better situations from Gabo Phoenix and get into, um, you know, just do better for the family. It's like um, the reservations at that time too were kind of pushing people out the late 1800s, early 1900s and telling people they couldn't own property, couldn't have cars, you couldn't have anything. Um, you had to give it all up to the tribe or sell it to become a part of the tribe and stay on the rolls or whatever. You couldn't help people who were not associated with the tribe, especially people who were in the status of so-called black. So if you were helping so-called black people, people who were not identified as being Indian or being part of that lineage or whatever, then you will be kicked out of tribes and stuff like that. You say, I need to visit Virginia to see if there are any records of my ancestors' connection with spots of rain. Yeah, all those records, I gotta be telling people, the, the Library of Virginia has most of those records, so you can go there and see those records. But um, like I said, the, the parks have a lot of history in them. And I wish I could go on the other side of the park, but I don't think I'm gonna have enough time or battery to do that. I'm like huffing and puffing because the wind, it's like I'm fighting the wind, I'm not tired. I'm just fighting against the wind right now. I'm like breathing in the air. So. Yeah, all my relatives' lines come out of Virginia, except one way back, who was um, actually the daughter of one of the Narragansett chiefs. So I have um, Narragansett ancestry as well, which we are just, one of my cousins just found out for us. But I always felt like a connection to them for some reason, so. Thank you, Gary. Um, yeah, but like I said, this park has a lot of um, mounds, a lot of old big trees that I've seen a lot. And it's also near a prison. <laughs> like a lot of these things, they just put it on top of the indigenous towns. And if you go back, if you're from the East Coast, I'm at Occoquan Park in Virginia. If you go to the, like if you're on the East Coast and you look up the local history of your county, you're going to see all that information. You're going to see them talking about the indigenous people who were there, what towns that they just built on top of, uh, which mansions used to be indigenous people's mansions that they ran out, especially in Georgia, um, dealing with the Cherokee and the Creeks. Um, those people were doing kind of successful. They were trying to, certain groups, certain bands were trying to integrate into European society. And they had plantations and businesses and they were doing good. They had their own part of town on their reservation land. And during the Trail of Tears to kind of push those people out and these new immigrants just moved in these people's mansions and on their farms and everything. Showing up. Any chow and oak here? I'm not familiar with them. Unless there's a different spelling. Maybe it's my family, but do y'all's grandparents and elders have straight hair or fairly straight curly hair? How did it change from straight to curly to coarse? Um, well, my family had all different hair types, but um, I also had very, very dark-skinned people who had wavy hair who looked like any other uh, so-called African-American person. So it just depends on the people. Yeah, this is, there was people just moved in on top of these towns. Um, they have several maps in Virginia that shows that. So it's not, um, I'm, not making this, <laughs> I'm not making it up. You can look it up. 
to look everything up that I'm saying. Right? I don't know what's going on. These people creeping or something. I'm walking by with this camera. They all trying to hide like I'm putting them on camera. <laughs> y'all shouldn't be doing what y'all doing then. <laughs> Anyways. Where some are balding. Uh, some of the hairstyles were bald hairstyles. Mm. So especially during wartime, like I know for sure the Iroquois had more of a bald haircut, maybe like a patch of hair where they stuck their feathers on, or like a mohawk. Right, Phoenix, we had different hair, like even in, within our family, we have different hair. I have uh, curly hair. My mom's hair is looser than mine. My dad's hair is tighter than both of our hair. So my son's hair is kind of tight, but I have curly hair and his dad has curly hair. So this is genes, genetics. Never heard of the ghost dance prophecy? Yep. I think the ghost dance uh, mainly has to do with the Sioux. It's not really um, dealing with us over here on the on the east side in the woodlands, but I'm pretty sure we have similar dances. Say my hair is curly. Yeah, a lot of people. Um, that's the thing with us in America. A lot of so-called black people have curly hair, but some people don't know it. Either they put perms or the men keep their hair cut short. So some people might not know. And the hair acts different, like my hair is kinky, so it's kinky curly, like if it's, when, it, when I cut it all off, when I did a big chop, it was kind of straight and then it got kinkier. Once it was a couple inches, it was, if I combed it out, it looked like a, like a bushy, I guess. Do I got any more questions? I'm about to get out of here soon. hair in my face. You so your mother's side migrated from Georgia to Connecticut. Yeah, because what was going on is a lot of people were going back home. Like, uh, what a lot of people don't know is those, those Cherokee from down there are originally from up north. They're from Ohio, Ohio Valley, New York and stuff. So the Cherokee came down to Georgia to trade. They're not originally from Georgia. That's the kicker with the whole, that was the, the loophole in the Trail of Tears business that people don't know. And they keep perpetuating that. That's their, their um, well, I'm not trying to get into all this stuff, but they try to perpetuate that's their ancestral land, which it is not. They came down there to trade with the Spanish. Yes, even the bands from Virginia are not Cherokee bands and other tribes are not from here. The Iroquois tribes are not from Virginia, including Nottaway. Nottaway mixed with a tribe that was already here. Right, it's not their land really, but it is their land. Like it's not their ancestral land, but it was their land before, um, before because of colonization. So they still have ownership of that land, but you know, you can make loopholes with that. They, yeah, they set it off for business. So they were doing a lot of trades and even trading with the Yamasee and other tribes down there. And also the war that was going on, like I said, the Great War, they were coming down and warring with the Algonquian tribes and they were whooping, to be honest, they were whooping the Algonquian up. Like, <laughs> they, were, they, were, they were whooping them up. Hmm, I can't even see the camera. A lot of, yeah, they were making a lot of money. Now, the Iroquois are good business people. They're good traders. They're trappers, as they used to call trappers. And, like, even that, the ancestral uh, memory. I'm sorry, I'm looking crazy, y'all. Even with the ancestral memory, trapping. Like, they was trapping back then, and they trapping now, right? Trapping and rapping. 
So the trappers then were hustling, they were trading furs, they were trading slaves, <clears throat> trading goods, trying to get wampum and, and um, gold, well gold, different things, copper, things that they couldn't get their hands on easily. We had gold here, we had copper here, but it wasn't as readily available. So they was trapping, they was hustling, they had their trap houses. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. Like, this stuff is in the history books. So. History is distorted. My history, my history is not distorted. The history and the books are distorted. When you look at the primary sources, you'll see what I'm saying. Okay, I'm trying to get some of y'all answers, I mean, questions before I go. Yeah, there's a lot of smaller tribes that got absorbed, it's especially under the Cherokee name, because the Cherokee, like I said, they were such um, good warriors and good businessmen. A lot of people was like, we gotta, you know, come, come F with y'all. Like, we, we wanna be Cherokee. Like, we gonna bring our whole tribe under y'all name and get on these treaties and get protection. So it's just like what they did was they came down here shooting, burning villages of the, Algonquian tribes, then they, it's basically when you throw a rock and you hide behind somebody back. So they were throwing rocks at, well, I'm both, I'm both ancestors, I'm both have Iroquois and uh, Algonquian ancestry. So basically they throw a rock and then they hide behind the European back with their treaties, and their deals that they were doing. So under that Cherokee name, there was a lot of deals being done and eventually it backfired on him, on them because the mulattoes started taking over and they were working for their European fathers. So that's how things got messed up. He said they moved to Ohio through Virginia. Now they're originally from Ohio and New York and all those areas up north came down from um, Canada. And there's also bands and clans who come from the south, so, but not from Georgia in that area. Came from Mexico in Central America. But, let's see. I'm gonna see y'all later. I gotta roll out. I got stuff to do. I'm leaving the park now. So hopefully I'll see you guys soon. Magabo.